So just how strong is this tendency for electrons to be paired? We could get some insight into that question if we could get a hold of compounds and find out the frequency with which compounds having even numbers of electrons are available and found versus compounds that have odd numbers of electrons. The prediction, of course, is that pairing, electron pairing, requires even numbers of electrons. And so if we see a much greater tendency for compounds to exist with even numbers of electrons, that would support that the idea, the idea that the tendency for pairing is very strong. We're going to look at a series of compounds and find out how frequently they appear in a readily available database. We'll start with the hydrocarbon C6H12. Then we'll jump to see whether there's any compounds that have an odd number of valence electrons looking at the C6H13, and we'll continue the series back to an even number, C6H14. So in terms of numbers of valence electrons, the first compound is going to have 36 valence electrons, then the second one will have 37, and the last one will have 38. And so we'll see that we go from even to odd, back to even, and we want to find out how frequently we see the distribution among these various uh, hydrocarbon compounds. We can use the ChemID database to support our hypothesis about electron pairing. If we look for formulas having C6, and we need a dash in there, let's start with H12, C6H12, we find that there's 48 compounds. If we go back and try that one with the odd number of electrons, what do we find? C6H13 produces no record. Is that just because we've reached the limit? Well, if we try the next homolog in the series, C6H14, give that a search, we find 10 compounds. So indeed, the idea that we only see compounds in the database with even numbers of electrons suggesting pairing is pretty well supported by this simple analysis. Electron pairs may or may not be involved in chemical bonding. For two electrons that are paired but not involved in chemical bonding, we'll represent them as two dots centered on a single atom. We'll call this a non-bonded pair of electrons, a lone pair, or an unshared pair of electrons. All three words mean the same thing. We'll use the small letter n to symbolize the non-bonded pair of electrons, and we'll use that frequently. So you should get used to that. A pair of electrons that are involved in chemical bonding are represented as a single line that joins the two atoms that share that pair of electrons. This will be called a bonding pair of electrons. Electron pairs are grouped together into what are known as domains. It's basically a region of space where the group of electron pairs reside. So it could simply be an electron pair domain might be a lone pair domain or a non-bonding domain in the case of a non-bonding pair of electrons. And then we have three types of bonding domains involving single bonds, one pair of electrons, double bond domains involving two pairs of electrons, or triple bond domains in which the two atoms are joined by three sets of electron pairs. We're going to use the electron pair domain concept to establish geometry by the valence shell electron pair repulsion model in the next webcast.